After decades of working for your life savings, could it be at risk from the nature of the currency itself? Gold and precious metals have been used in trade throughout the history of civilization, and many people are still protecting their funds by purchasing gold. Paper currencies have been printed since soon after the invention of paper itself. Mongol leader Kublai Khan confiscated all gold and silver in his kingdom, forcing everyone to accept paper money on pain of death. Paper currencies printed in vast quantities led to the collapse of the Persian economies in 1294 and China around 1450. The government of China banned the use of paper money for hundreds of years after that event. In the United States, paper currencies have been around through our history. First, they were printed by banks and states, and later the bills became U.S. Treasury notes. And in 1913, the Federal Reserve started controlling mm -hmm. the paper tender. Since that time, the buying power has decreased as inflation slowly eats away at the buying power of the dollar. Dan Jeromo is a gold director elite marketing globally, utilizing the infrastructure of Carrot Bars International, a group that's aimed at encouraging the return of precious metals as a preservation and exchange resource. He's an expert in gold bullion and the history of paper currency. Dan, also known as Boomer, was also asked to sit on the Roundtable Leadership Council for Carrot Bars. For more information on an exciting opportunity, you can take advantage of the website, realgoldmoney.com. He's our guest on the show today. He's here to talk to us about the U.S. dollar and how precious metals could provide a haven from inflation. We'll talk about the devaluation of the dollar and how it affects American families and how ordinary people like you can protect your life savings. Welcome to the program, Dan. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate you having me on the show today. Well, it's great to have you here. Gold is always a very popular topic. People <laughs> love it. Uh, you go to the jewelry store and it's, it's shining in front of yeah. you. Um, people have been using it as a medium of exchange for years, as, as I mentioned. Um, but how does the real value of precious metals compare to the U.S. dollar? We've seen all these bailouts and we've seen the, the inflation as we talked about. So how does gold, how is gold tied to that? Very good question. First of all, many people don't realize that that the dollar, this right here, that dollar was worth one and a half grams of gold when it first came out. Most, that, that wasn't taught to me in schools. Was it taught to, to anybody else? And so the dollar, and this is the world's exclusive reserve currency until it isn't anymore, okay? There's a shelf life with all money, and this is supposed to be a representation of your labor. But why is it worth less tomorrow than it is today? And so paper money is merely a substitute for real gold money, okay? And so its role in society is back to the basics. Whatever happens to the dollar happens to everything you have kept in dollars, okay? And so if there was a way that you could get to back to real gold money as a preservation of your labor, that is where we need to head because it has created all the symptoms in society for it not doing what it used to do. It's really just that simple. But many people haven't paid attention to it because it's so slow. It's like a mouse eating on a little piece of a cookie. And so over time you see it, but not directly in a, in a, in a short sense. So the dollar, one dollar, one US dollar, used to be equal to how many grams? 1.5 grams of gold. So then what caused the shift to, well, to, to remove the gold from the currency? Well, number one, they, they could, the government could only print enough money as, as they had enough gold in their vaults to back it up. And when certain policies, even with good intentions, whatever, caused them to exceed that, they had to make a change and decouple it from gold. And I believe that was August 15th, 1971. Now, we've had a number of guests on this program who have warned of an economic collapse. Uh, Gerald Salente has been a guest on the program a number of times. He's warned of this for, uh, mm -hmm. for some time. We've also had Charles Goyette, the author of The Dollar Meltdown. He's been on the program. He's warned of the, of the pending collapse. Uh, and in your view, in your assessment of what you've seen as you travel the world and you, you witness different economies, mm -hmm. you witness different mediums of exchange, um, are we as a nation here in the United States under the threat of a economic collapse? Well, I'm sure nobody, I'm not a, a, uh, uh, a, a sightseer. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. But I would say that we see all the symptoms in society today that there's going to be a change. We saw it in the mortgage debacle. Mm -hmm. we, no, no real legislation has changed from that since then. So there's nothing to prevent that from happening again. There's all kinds of other indicators across the planet, as we see in, you know, the, for instance, Occupy Wall Street, Tea Party movement, regime changes, bail-ins, bailouts, private pension funds being swapped out with public trust funds. We've seen Venezuela in early February actually devalue their bolivar, right? Mm -hmm. They did it without warning, and I'm sure that caused some economic turmoil. And so we are the world's, ex this is the world's exclusive reserve currency until it isn't anymore. And it is only backed by a promise, okay, that it's good to pay the taxes, right? And they can continue to leverage it as long as somebody wants to buy your debt. Well, what if somebody doesn't want to buy your debt anymore? That is going to come a time when there's going to be some changes. I do not know what they're going to look like here or in another country. But as the dollar goes, do many other currencies go? Now, in the, the Great Depression, the collapse that took place there, uh, if, you look at a, if you look at a chart, you can see the stock market. It's a little, a little pimple mm -hmm. compared to where we are today. Um, do you believe we're on the edge of a super bubble? In my opinion, yes. And I think, I think honestly, in common sense, can the stewards of this ever tell you that it's in trouble? Logically, in common sense, they can't because the confidence in it has to stay high. But we're seeing different things like Myra's and, you know, all the different aspects. Even in cities in, uh, in California, they're taking the city pension funds and they're swapping them out with public trust bonds. Hard assets swapped out with public trust bonds, IOUs, to extend it. And so we're witnessing some things we haven't seen before, mainly because they've occurred before, but nobody's old enough to have lived through many of those changes, maybe in some countries, but not here. Now, you're constantly referencing the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the gold. Let's talk about real tangible gold. Okay. Could a metal like gold lose its value? If a sizable mine perhaps is discovered or, or, or large investors decide that they're going to sell off their, their assets. Well, that's a good point. You see, one thing unique about gold is its attributes th that come with that particular metal. It doesn't rust. It doesn't rot. It's always equal to the task it takes to extract it, even if a sizable amount is, is, is found. You still have to extract it. And so the market determines what that's worth. But many times it's manipulated by price of paper gold, not the same as physical metal. The price of gold may go up and down, but the physical buying power of the metal has never changed. It's always been stable. What, what an ounce of gold will buy today would buy it 100 years ago. Okay, it still translates. You could still buy those things in society. The dollar, no, for instance, $100,000 in cash in 1932 is only worth the buying power of $2,000 today. $100,000 in gold in 1932 is worth almost $4.5 million in buying power today. Which one would you rather have backing up your savings? All right? So who's, who's profiting? Then? Who's profiting when the purchasing power of the dollar declines or the gold markets are manipulated? Well, those that, all you have to do is follow the money. Just follow the money. You, you can do your own research. I encourage you to do your own research and find out yourself. Anytime interest is collected, okay, who's getting the interest? Real, realize this. Three years ago, the government, and uh, we were co was collecting $3 to figure out what to do with $1. Last year, they were collecting $4 to figure out what to do with $1. This year, they're collecting $5 to figure out what to do with $1. Where is this going? All right? Yeah, I can add. All right? You just imagine if that's happening in your own home. 
And I believe we have good intentions, but I'm not so sure about the results. And so you can do things to protect yourself. So Dan, how could using gold in trade work for ordinary people when, when corner stores are not prepared to accept precious metals in exchange for goods? I understand your company is actually working on that solution. Yes, we, uh, the, the Carrot Bars International Company has a unique premise as gold is money. Gold is money and inflation insurance, not gold as a commodity, not gold for speculative investment, not, not, not a program for the Wall Street trader mentality, okay? Not that. But you see, if, if the kind of gold that they use, which is currency grade, 999.9 .9 purity, stamped by an LBMA certified refinery on the London good delivery list. Now you have one of those, uh, yes, those, yeah. those with you. As a matter of fact, this is a carrot bar right there. And that, that has one gram of gold. Yes, this is a measured weight of pure 24 karat gold. Most people have never seen that. And it's surrounded in a certificate of authenticity. Whenever gold leaves a vault, you have to have something that shows where it came from, etc. This surrounds the ingot like a mini vault. It's heat sealed in there that can withstand extreme temperatures, including UV radiation. And it's got holograms and other features that make it Gold is money, and gold is a non-compete, real gold money, not as a, com not, we're not competing with any other currency. We're not here to replace anything. It, this in it simply is a real form of the kind of gold that all banks and all governments use themselves to settle debt between themselves. So this, this in essence is rather historic because it is, it is a global gold currency that people can use in daily life as a medium of exchange. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Yes, is, that's a fair assessment, assessment. Now, part of that is very simple. This here is 100% gold backed, isn't it? When we will, we will probably see new currencies coming out, maybe China coming out, and it might be 20% gold back, mm -hmm. okay? Understand a carat bar is a 100% gold back. That's only real physical 24 karat gold in there, okay? So it makes it unique in the world. And uh, it's private issue, which means it doesn't belong to any one country, okay? And it could be used in some type of form of exchange. Look at the shape of it. It's recognizable by uh, many people. Now, Congressman Ron Paul quite often referred to honest money. Um, there's a lot of people who are, who are concerned with honest money as we, as we have already revealed the U.S. dollar is in uh, dramatic decline since the creation of the Federal Reserve System. Uh, would you classify the carrot bar as a, as a perfected form of sound money? I would say it's as close as possible to that. Why? It's nothing fiat. There's nothing printed out of thin air. There's no credit involved with it, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no fractional lending. Like when you give a dollar to the bank, they can loan out nine more and they collect nine times the interest. Okay. And so for this, it is only real value exchange, which, which the term exchange value will become extremely apparent as we watch in different places, changes in the global money. You see, it's not opinion, it's math. Just do the math and follow the money. So people can use those to, uh, to trade their fiat paper uh, for gold, but they could also use them uh, as the medium of exchange. And you, we were just about to get into that. Um, yeah. Explain how that, that whole structure works. Well, you see, paper money is just a representation of the labor mm -hmm. that you gave to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay? Credit is money you haven't earned yet. You haven't given the labor yet, right? And some of that is being used as a tool. But as you use, as you use credit or you use digital fractional lending, what the banks do, what happens is that it causes inflation in what you do. When, when actuality, the paper money was designed to be a means of exchange anywhere. You want this, this guy wants to sell that to you. How do you get that exchange? We, we're, we're familiar with paper money. One thing was very interesting when I went in Toron Toronto, Canada, and most people haven't experienced this. I went to go buy something from a hotel gift shop. The owner said, how would you like to pay for that? Canadian dollars, American dollars, pounds, euros, or yuan? Which one? Wow! 
I never, I have never experienced that before that, which got to me thinking. They might say, or carrot bars. So how would then a retailer, when, when this is fully implemented, uh, accept it? Is, is there, isn't there a smartphone system in place? Uh, almost like a, if you would, a digital Bitcoin backed by gold sort of thing? Well, you know, Bitcoin's a totally different phenomenon because there's nothing tangible. We only deal, the, the company only deals with real physical metals. Nothing else except that. We only use the same kind of gold that all banks and governments already use to settle debt. Okay. Well, so, so, so well, yeah. for example, if, if, a, if a retailer had, uh, had a Carapar's account yes. and a, a Carapar's account holder decided to go to that retailer, yes. they could, in essence, uh, transfer gold between each other simply because they're both account holders with the same company using the digital medium? That is a project that the company is working on. We are not quite there yet, but there's nothing to preclude anybody from exchanging what they want to somebody who was willing to take this. I think the big picture of our company in the future is that. K-Exchange. Yes, where you see the exchange value, okay? Mm -hmm. Where somebody who has something is willing to exchange it for carrot bars gold, which is unique. See, this as gold as money looks the same in any country. It's uniform. And so carrot bars also has a, a plan that creates an honest money system, free of inflation. Free, okay. And so you could exchange this in a physical form for somebody that was willing to take this. And so you'll see these on windows of cash registers and in the uh, windows of merchants. Okay. Um, and for exchange. Now, you still would pay the sales tax on the exchange. We are not here to, 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 to take the tax base on a sale away from any government. We want to be good for governments. We want to be an alternative economic commerce mechanism to allow the movement of goods and services through society when the paper money obviously is going to have times when it's going to have trouble. So as long as the tax base can be collected, from the exchange, we're good for countries. We're good for governments because if the expenses go up and the bottom line goes down for a merchant, he has to decide, is he going to close the doors or is he going to borrow more money to try and go through it? And so as long as the, the commerce can be collected and it's good for him to continue to move goods and services and the country collects the sales tax base, the country is going to like us. We're going to be the pressure release valve in times when the paper money logically and mathematically is going to have some challenges. We want to be good for countries. Well, let's talk about families now. Yes. Okay, we, we've established that, that merchants can take advantage of this. And, and as I mentioned, if, if a carrot bar account holder uh, has gold in their vault, mm -hmm. that they could go to that merchant. Yes. So if a family or an individual would like to get, get their gold, if yes. they want to start trading their paper, uh, for gold, for carrot bars, so that they could either save for themselves or, or, or use it in a, in a, in a retail K-exchange. Uh, how would someone go about doing that? Well, number one, <clears throat> you can get more details at realgoldmoney.com. Mm -hmm. I think that's a logical place to start. Mm -hmm. Number two, they can set up an account for no cost, no maintenance fees, and get a self-managed protected software website with no website fees. Mm -hmm. There's no ob obligatory commitments to that other than that, that you have your own account, okay? And you follow the terms and conditions of the, of the company, okay? And so they can save as little bit. They can save periodically. They can set up, set it and forget it, dollar cost averaging accounts. And the more I th honestly believe that every family should save. I mean, we need to teach our children to save again. One significant thing this, this company is doing. Mm -hmm. It's offering us to teach by example our children to save again. They spend every penny that they get. And so we, we need two generations ago, we didn't do that. We need to bring back common sense about saving. And you cannot save in paper. How do you save money? You make sure it's not made out of paper. So with Carrot Bars International, you, your company is offering the ability to establish first a gold bullion savings plan. That's exactly correct. So when people are putting money into the bank, they're putting paper into the bank, what happens there as opposed to when you're creating a gold bullion savings account? 
Well, understand, we only deal in physical metal. You go to your bank and you put money in it, go try and get the money out. It's not there. They, they use it and loan it, lend it out somewhere else. That's how they make money. That's why banks are always the biggest building in every city. Okay? And so they utilize the money to make money. But they utilize in a way that you and I don't get to, don't get to partake in that. That's privileged and private to their knowledge in the background. And so what, our, what we do is very simple. We take paper money, we turn it into physical gold money, and we save it. We put it in our piggy bank. And as, the, as, you, as you, the paper money that's supposed to represent your labor, it loses value. You need to get two jobs, three jobs. Kids stay home till they're 25 or 26. You see different ways that they're trying to access to get the money. And so the simplicity of everything is just take some of your paper money, exchange it into gold money, and save it. Okay? As the value of the paper money goes down, the value of the gold account preserves your labor and value in physical metal. And so it balances out your losses from all the decisions made by bankers, politicians, and governments, even with good intentions that didn't work out the way they thought it was going to work out. I can't control that. What now, I can do is what I can control is what I do myself. Now, in my research, I've also discovered that through Care of Ours International, there's, there's a way that families could also uh, achieve an additional income stream through an affiliate program. That's exactly right. Care of Ours is an e-commerce company. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think of the premise in the future where anything that can, that can be bought in paper money could also be bought in fractions of a gram of real gold money. If the gold money were uniform, easily recognizable in the hands of a lot of people. There lies the brilliance. Look at the shape, look at the metal, and it's the only kind of metal that all banks and governments use for settlement of debt. That's why, we do, that's why this company doesn't do coins. That's why it doesn't do silver. Are they good forms to save? Yes. But are they uni universally accepted worldwide as good for settlement of debt? And so we will see the advent of more and more of these K exchanges come as the exchange value of the paper money becomes apparent of what it wasn't, isn't doing. When, they, when people recognize that, the economic light bulb will come on. But, but what is the affiliate program? And the how, affiliate how does program, it work and how, how can a family benefit from that, aside from the simply, simply setting up a gold bullion savings yes. account? The simplicity is that your own actions to set one up and use one, mm -hmm. Harabars doesn't advertise. They give you the ability to refer others to us to open their own account. I don't sell gold. I don't give tax or financial advice. Mm -hmm. Here, I offer people to, look at this is what I'm doing. This is my result. If you like that, you can get your own account too. And if you like it, you can refer other people if you want to. If you want to. And in turns, they, they give a substantial, robust rewards program back to you and they've been in existence in, for over four and a half years it was in the middle of our fifth year now and um paying out regularly on, on on time as needed okay now what are some of the differences for small investors uh, between holding on to certificates certificates for gold and possessing the metals firsthand well first you need to know that physical metal is insurance okay paper stocks and certificates are an investment can investments go to zero yes does the physical metal ever go to zero no it's tangible you know you put a dollar in a fire what do you got when you get when you get done ashes you put this in a, in a fire what do you got you still got the metal it takes 1954 degrees to melt it and so you can't take the paper certificate and they're going to give you physical gold built bullion for it they take this much amount of physical metal and they fractionalize it maybe a, even a hundred times. So the stock that they create that from could be as, as much as a hundred times more than the actual physical metal that, that backs it up. Okay. Now, Dan, we're almost out of time. And if there's one thing that you want our viewers to take away uh, from your experience working with Carrot Bars, uh, uh, your experience in the, in the global economy, uh, and things you've witnessed over time. Uh, if there's one thing that you want the American people to take away from your experience, what would that be? Number one, evaluate where you're at. 
and assess, is what, is what you're getting what you want? Have you entrusted everybody else to take care of the things that, that you maybe need to start taking care of yourself? What is the message that you're sending to your children on top of that? And if you never worked another day in your life, how much money you have coming in? Life's a series of tasks. Some tasks pay you $30,000 a year. Some pay you $100,000 a year. Some pay you $500,000 a year. But as long as you can perform the tasks. We have a logical, universal solution to the worldwide debt savings and currency crisis, and you don't need anybody else to do it except you, the person you look, look at when you're brushing your teeth in the mirror. And so we offer anybody that wants to do that. They have the opportunity to do that, insulate themselves from the, from the, from the decisions that made by the people we trusted that didn't work out quite the way they thought it was going to work out. Okay. All right, Dan, thanks for joining us today on Thank WHCT. You very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, that was Dan Girolmo. He's an expert on gold bullion and the history of paper currencies. You can find out more and get plugged in with him at realgoldmoney.com.